I haven't been back to Michigan where I grew up in over four years uh, and I'm here this week which is a beautiful week in May and I'm just looking around and I thought about how this is why I'm so into plants. Um, it's a beautiful still evening so let me show you a couple of things including my mom's uh, small but really adorable greenhouse and garden. I also just wanted to show you a few of the wild plants that grow around here. This is in uh, the western side of the state of Michigan. So yeah, let me show you around. The first thing I want to talk about are all the trees around here. This is why I miss trees living in a city. Because we're just surrounded by them here. So this tree was really tiny when I lived here and now it's a full tree which just tells you how, tells you how fast time goes. This is a milkweed. So if you ever come across this plant anywhere, city, country, roadside, park, garden, anything, don't cut it, don't mow it. This is what monarchs use to lay their eggs and caterpillars eat it. It's their only food source in North America are milkweed uh, family plants, so. Don't mow them. Also, if you really like houseplants, these are a relative of Hoyas, actually, believe it or not. My very first garden was actually up on this little grassy knoll. Well, it was grassy at the time. Uh, now it has a tree over it. It didn't have that tree. What I do see are wild raspberries. These are going to go into bloom soon. You can see the little flowers right there. And they grow everywhere around here. Um, they're a really good food source for birds and deer, <laughs> and which there's plenty of deer, and rabbits. And of course you can eat them too. Some are better than others. They tend to have a lot of seeds. There are some blackberries though that are pretty good that grow wild around here. So oak trees grow absolutely everywhere here and they don't grow super well where I live in Canada. They do grow in some spots, just they don't love the cities. This is actually a really big, beautiful oak tree right here. It actually wasn't here when I lived here. If it was here, it was so small, I didn't even notice it. And here's the beech tree. These are so common around West Michigan. And this is a cherry tree. This is a choke cherry tree, um, I believe. It's not a cherry tree that you would eat the cherries from at all. The birds eat them though. I think the trees are so pretty right now. It's early summer and they're just still that fresh green color. So this is more milkweed right here and you can see the pods right here. In the autumn these pods burst and the seeds fly everywhere. I don't see any left. They were probably taken away in the winter. And that's how they spread. So today we are taking a walk in the woods, not too far from where I grew up. And this is a beautiful example of like a West Michigan woods along the lakeshore or not far from the lakeshore. And so when I talk about gardening in the city, I mean, this is kind of what I grew up in. And this is why I really appreciate nature and why I love nature. So I thought it's just really pretty here in late May. And it was worth taking some videos, so uh, let's see what we find. There's apparently a lot of beavers here, so we'll see. Probably not a beaver in the middle of the morning. This 
So I might live in Canada, but this is a tree that's been cut down by a beaver. <laughs> that's exactly what a beaver does, in case ever, anyone ever wondered. I've only actually ever seen beavers in Michigan. And there's a marshy area. Oh, that's a train. This is a marshy area where the beavers live. It's a really beautiful day here too. I don't know what kind of mushroom this is, but it looked kind of cool. They have a little pollinator garden here, which is really interesting because they have all of the plants labeled. There's of course milkweed, but also bergamot, uh, different kinds of daisies, columbine, compass plant apparently, penstemon, yarrow, which I of course have in the city there. <laughs> Some beautiful grasses, dogwood tree, which is past flowering now. I'm curious about this plant, which is called New Jersey tea. I do not, I'm not familiar with that one. I'm very curious. The crickets just started making noises. <laughs> so now I am going to show you my mom's greenhouse. It's really cute and I wanted to do a tour for you. First of all, they have grapevines here, which how picturesque are these? So pretty. And there's my mom's greenhouse. She has two green stalks, just like how I have two green stalks on my balcony. They work really well for her too, but she has these nice little spinny things on the bottom that I really wish I had ordered for mine because they look so handy. Right now she's got flowers, mostly lettuce, radishes, strawberries. It's looking really, really good and yeah, I think she's doing a great job. She has a couple of beds. This is going to be a flower bed. Um, the flower seeds haven't come up yet. And then she has wonderful peas here. She actually has a worm composter. That's what's in the middle there, which is really interesting. Um, she has some volunteer tomatoes coming up, so those will be really nice. She's in a warmer zone than I am, so she does have rosemary from last year and thyme that overwinters. These are called four o'clocks, so I actually planted those for her a few days ago. Um, she had grown them, but I planted them out. And then nasturtiums. She has zinnias coming there, which makes me really want to kind of rush home and put all of my zinnias in because because I've been traveling, they're a little behind. I'm a little behind on my summer flowers that should have been planted by now. So as you can see, her native soil is actually sand. 
My parents are very close to Lake Michigan and they basically live on a sand dune. I mean, not right on Lake Michigan, but um, the soil, the native soil at their house is sand. So raised beds are basically all she can do. Um, this is her tomato bed, which is looking really amazing. She just planted out these tomatoes and yeah, another worm composter because basically she has to make her own soil. So why not? The soil looks really good. I'm excited to see how this turns out later in the summer. She has a strawberry bed and I gave her the suggestion to put raspberries in because of course strawberries are kind of only spring, early summer and she wanted something that she could get later in the summer as well. I believe she's going to put some tomatoes in there. And this is her greenhouse, which looks so good. I'm going to move her screen aside. How adorable is this? <laughs> so she actually has a hydroponic lettuce tower, which is what you see here. It's a hydroponic system that my parents made. Um, I believe this is macrame that my mom has made actually, and she's going to put a flower in there. And then so far she's been growing lettuce this spring. I don't know what she has planned in here for summer. Sometimes she has put tomatoes, but it's hit or miss because it can get too hot. Right now, these lettuces look so good and look how colorful they are. She has romaine type. Um, she has the curly leaf lettuce, butterhead type, just a few different varieties. I told her she could just go into like the artisanal lettuce business. <laughs> a couple of tomato seedlings over here, cucumbers. Um, these are a couple of different flowers, I believe. Oh no, these are some tomatoes she recently started. Cucumber down there. My mom also has a really popular Instagram, which, uh, where she posts all of her flower pictures. Um, she's more of a social media person than I am. Um, so I will note her Instagram account below so that you can follow her. So today I'm at Lake Michigan, which is gorgeous, quiet, still. I'm used to seeing it with crashing waves, but it's been so quiet these past couple of days. I wouldn't say I took growing up just down the street from this for granted when I was a kid, but I don't think I realized at the time how rare and special it was to live in a place like this. So this is Lake Michigan, one of the Great Lakes, and it's kind of, there's this synchronicity because now I live in Montreal, which is along the St. Lawrence Seaway, and that's where the Great Lakes flow out into the ocean, so. These are just incredible sand dunes that are all along West Michigan on the eastern side of Lake Michigan, western side of the state of Michigan. They've had a lot of erosion in recent years because the water levels were actually so high that they were up to about what you're looking at, like they were that high. And um, this is just a natural process to have sand dunes kind of form and reform over time. It's funny because in school, we were always taught about the sand dunes and I always thought it was so boring, but now I find it pretty fascinating.
so that's it. That's my trip to Michigan. You know, the funny thing is, I was here in the summer about five or six years ago, and I actually made a video. And I never edited and posted it, and I really wish I had. Um, so I'm doing this one now because a lot of people ask me where I'm from, and I tell them Michigan, and no one really knows much about it. But I find this to be such a special place, so I'm happy to capture it in video. Maybe more for my purposes than yours. But if you did watch, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate you being here. So, have a wonderful summer.